Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Indeed, we do have two bills before us. Before I discuss them, I would at least like to acknowledge the um, absence of the author of one of them, the gentlelady from New York. Um, clearly, she is dealing with a great personal tragedy in her life. And although I have debated her frequently on the subject, uh, she, uh, she has certainly been a, a great professional in bringing this credit card legislation uh, to the House. And even though I disagree with 80 percent of the legislation, uh, to get something that is of this import passed through this House has spoken well of her. I am somewhat sensitive of debating the issue in her absence, but knowing that we have debated it frequently, uh, I know that there are plenty of people on her side of the aisle who will be able to... Uh, the, the gentleman would yield that was... Uh, I thank him for that gracious statement, and let me say on behalf of our colleague, Ms. Maloney, uh, she's fully understanding of this and has, you know, I, I, I'm sure she will be appreciative of, of the sentiment and, of course, would have, has no objection to the gentleman going forward. Uh, thank you. I think before considering the implications of either of the two pieces of legislation that we need to take a very careful look at where we are in this economy. Uh, since we have passed the President's economic stimulus program, unfortunately, a num uh, uh, another three million of our fellow citizens have lost their jobs. Uh, we now have the highest unemployment rate we've had in a quarter of a century at 9.8 percent. Most professional economists believe that that will soon tick up to 10 percent. I need not tell you where we stand with respect to the debt and the deficit. Uh, the Federal Reserve released information yesterday that I believe showed that total consumer credit outstanding, which includes everything from credit card debt to loans for recreational vehicles, fell $12 billion in August, or 5.8 percent, at a seasonally adjusted annual rate. Seventh straight month of declines, longest stretch since 1991. Uh, from the other Federal Reserve data has indicated that credit card lines have now been cut, I believe, by 25 percent since last, in the last, uh, in last year. In the last two years, credit card lines cut by $1.25 trillion. Uh, I am very concerned about the impact that this has on small businesses. Uh, we've had testimony in this committee room. Uh, and I've had lots of testimony in the 5th Congressional District of Texas that I have the honor of representing uh, that tells me that small businesses that rely upon credit cards are having trouble accessing credit lines to preserve and create jobs. And I think job one of this committee and this Congress ought to be getting this economy moving again, getting people jobs, and so I'm concerned about the potential unintended consequences that either of these pieces of legislation would have. Uh, speaking first to what we've known as the credit card holders bill of rights, uh, I would just say, and, and now we have a new piece of legislation that would essentially move up the timetable for this legislation. Uh, I do not believe there is a good time to enact a bad bill. Uh, this is a bad bill. Uh, I believe in 20 percent of it. I do believe that consumers have been misled uh, on disclosures. I do believe there are deceptive practices out there. But unfortunately, this bill goes way beyond that. And I'm afraid that both bills may have the potential to simply exacerbate uh, a credit crunch at a time uh, when small businesses are having trouble accessing uh, credit, again, to create and preserve jobs. Ultimately, the so-called credit card bill of rights, which I still view as a credit card bill holders of uh, wrong, uh, it, it, it erodes risk-based pricing, and it's risk-based pricing uh, that has allowed millions of people to access credit who haven't been able to access it before, including, again, small businesses. Uh, I believe in many respects it represents another uh, bit of bailout legislation because it tells the people who do it right, ultimately they're going to pay higher fees and higher interest rates to help subsidize those who do it wrong. And I hate to say that I told you so, but when we debated this bill, I predicted what would happen, and indeed we see it happening. Now, credit card companies, in anticipation of this legislation, are cutting back the lines even further, and I'm afraid we could exacerbate the situation. Uh, with respect to the interchange, uh, I, I'm still very curious, ultimately, what this bill is going to do to help consumers. I'm not unsympathetic to those who complain about it, but I'm wondering how is this any different 
from the cost that one pays for payroll, the one that pays for real estate or their advertising. It's a cost of doing business. Uh, if there are uh, r legal restraints of trade here, I'd like to hear about them. Uh, if there are legitimate antitrust issues, I would like to hear about them. Uh, and otherwise, I see my time is up, so I'll have to hear about them later. <laughs>